Welcome back to What's in the Box. Today we are looking at the Haya 118th scale Alien Queen. Does she knock my favorite Alien Queen figure out of the top position? Stay tuned and we'll find out. This last year, Haya has been knocking out 118th Alien figures like there's no tomorrow. And so far, the quality has been fairly good for the size. When I heard they were going to do a series of Alien Queens, one for each film she appeared in. I was excited to see how they were going to scale down and pull off such an intricate design, while maintaining the posability that these small figures are known for. Now let's get this figure open and out of the box. Huh. I thought I never missed. Upon first inspection, the figure looks a lot better than the promotional material suggests, especially the jawline, which doesn't look as cartoony or exaggerated in person. The paint applications are surprisingly crisp, if a little impressionistic. In the first tray, you have the queen and her two inner mouth accessories, and on the second tray, you have her back spines, the base plates and H connectors, and a clear support rod. The figure measures roughly 15 inches in length from the tip of the tail to the head, and around 7.5 inches tall. In the hand, it feels slightly like a more delicate standard NECA alien figure. Assembly. Here's where things get a little sticky. The back spines do not want to pluck into the holes without bending or breaking. I have not had a figure come this close to being damaged while assembling it in a long time. I finally got them all in by slowly twisting the body and the spines in counter directions until the ball joint eased into the hole. The extended inner mouth and retracted mouth fit into the queen with a peg hole just at the back of the throat. Inserting it is a really tight fit and I ended up having to use tweezers to get the mouth in correctly. The base has four plates, which can be assembled any way you want, but the fit is not snug and the pins have a habit of falling out when you turn the plate over. To solve this, simply push the H connectors into some saran wrap, which will create a snugger fit. Once the plates are assembled, you can place the clear support post in any one of the four post pins, depending on how you want the queen to stand on the base. With the bitch now ready to be told the proper distance to keep away from Newt, we can now look at articulation. The queen has ball joints at both her shoulders and elbows, as well as a very delicate joint at the wrist. Seriously, be careful when twisting this joint. It wants to snap. The crown jets forward and back, and the jaw opens and closes, and the head rotates at the neck and a ball joint at the shoulders. The secondary arms rotate at the breastplate, but have no other articulation. The legs have a ball joint at the hip, and another at the knee joint, and a third at the calf joint, as well as full rotation and flexing at the feet. The tail is like almost every other alien queen figure. It is a bendy wire. So, how does she stack up against the competition? She is quite a bit more film accurate than the old McFarlane Toys Queen. Yes, I know McFarlane's official statement on this is that they were trying to emulate Stan Winston's original design, but I think it's more to cover up the fact that they didn't want to produce something as delicate and breakable as a true-to-film Alien Queen would have been at the time. When stacked up against Haya's figure, the Hot Toys figure looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. That being said, the Hot Toys figure does look to be more within the 118th scale than the Haya offering in that the higher figure feels slightly small next to the other alien warriors. Though technically from AVP, this is the only queen that Hot Toys has ever produced. Fingers crossed for the future, though. The Haya and Reveltech figures seem to be in the exact same scale, but ironically, the Haya figure beats Reveltech hands down in articulation, as well as film accuracy, leaving the Reveltech figure looking cheap and stubby by comparison. With Haya figures being much less expensive on both the first and secondary market, this choice is a no-brainer. Haya also stands up well against the Eagle Moss Queen, which has an awesome, dynamic pose, but is a statue and has no articulation, and the fine detail is far less pronounced announced than the Haya figure. Another thing that must be said about the Eagle Moss statue is that it is extremely poorly packaged and very breakable. Just looking at it will cause parts to fly off into the unknown while you desperately search for superglue. The Queen is the same scale as the Broodlord Reborn T-Rex, 
and actually displays nicely next to this figure as a contrast between the two. Normally, I don't like the whole xenomorph takes on genetic traits, oh look, it's a platypus alien idea, but a Tyrannosaurus Rex alien queen was too interesting and strange a thing not to pick up. Same goes for the big chap Rex. But does she beat NECA's offering? No. No, she doesn't. NECA's queen still stands as the best Aliens Queen action figure that has yet been produced. That being said, I think Haya has created a confident contender in the 118th scale and has produced my second favorite posable Alien Queen to date. Though small, the Haya Queen sports an incredible amount of detail and would be an amazing addition for those building a 118th scale alien diorama or just a fun figure to have on your desk. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you'd like to see content like this in the future, please hit like and subscribe, and remember, never stop collecting.